So what you do is choose one pattern below, and how do you see the function growing? So how is it going up by? So which function do you want to go with? One. All right, so function one. All right, now how is that increasing from figure one, figure two, and figure three? How many boxes are in figure one? Four. Okay, how many boxes are in figure two? Okay, how many boxes are in figure three? Okay, how, like, how is that increasing? Okay, so we're adding three. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the next one, on this figure, let's kind of think it through. We see that this is kind of doubling here and here, and then it's tripling. Um, Down here, you got these boxes, and then we become three. And it becomes a four. So this one's going to look a little bit more quadratic. -y. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Though. Okay, so go ahead and look at the next. Four pattern pa pattern tasks. So function B, how does each function grow? Okay, so looking at function B, how does that grow? Um, I would look at just the white space. Yeah. So what's it? So we're increasing by one. So this is going to be called a linear function. On function P, we see that there is a white box, and then there's four white boxes, and then there's nine white boxes. So from four, one, four to nine, we're not adding something. Instead, what we're doing here is we're squaring the number. What's one square? That's one. Two squared is, and then three squared is. So this one is going to be called a quadrant. Did I get three from? One, two, three. This is oh, a quadrant. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Function G, we started off with two, then we got four, and then we got eight. So what is this one doing? Um, two, four, eight. Multiply by two. This is what we're going to call an exponential. So multiply by two. Okay. All right. So what did we find? Let's put this into a table. So how many were in the first one? And then how many were in the second? Three. And then the third, fourth, and then fifth. It's done in that table. Okay, we're gonna graph this. So we're gonna plot the point one comma one. We're gonna go to the right one and then up one. The next point is, so the right two, up two. Can you plot these three? Yep. Their graph's gonna look like that, right? We're gonna connect those dots. This is gonna be a linear function because it's a line, and the parent function is going to be y equals x. And it can be used to describe the linear function. Okay, so four quadrants. Yep, this one's squared. So we're going to take our number and then square it. So what's one squared? One, two squared, four, three squared, nine. Can you fill in the last two? Four. Okay, so four squared is going to be four times four. What's four times four? Two. Okay. And then five squared, four. which is, four. there you go. Okay, so we're going to plot these points over here. Go ahead and take a moment, try that. So on that table, the X is your left, right. If it's positive, you're going right. If it's your y values or b of x values, that's your up down. So you only got all of it.
Okay, so this is what I got. And this is called a quadratic, because we're squaring it, right? And the parent function is y equals x squared. It can be used to describe quadratic functions. Okay, so when we square something, we're multiplying it by itself. All right, next one. In. What was going on with this one? We went two, four, eight. Okay, can you fill in the last two boxes? So this one's called an exponential function. Well, because it's multiplying, right? So the parent function for this one is y equals 2 raised to the x. So we're multiplying by 2 each time. And it's there to describe exponential functions. <laughs> are the six different parent functions, we've got linear, quadratic, and exponential. Those are the three that we've talked about so far. And then we've got absolute value, which have absolute value bars, square root, which have the square root, and cube root, which just has the cube root symbol. Okay. So you need to make sure that you know these parent functions, the shape of them, and then what they actually look like for the equation. Okay, so what is something? Ah, we're gonna skip this. All right, go to the next page. Okay, so match that characteristic. Is that the next one? Mm -hmm. All right, so match each feature with the corresponding statement. Okay, so where is our y-intercept? What is our y-intercept? What is across the y-axis? So let's have that conversation. Our y-axis is the one that's pointing up towards the sky. Our x-axis is the one that goes horizontal. So where does it cross the y-axis? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this line right here. Hold on. This line right here. Where does it cross the y axis? Mm -hmm. Where are you getting that from? Mm -hmm. Oh, up here? No. Um, look right here on this y axis, this line. Where does it cross? It's below eight, right? What number is below eight? Okay. Is it bigger than four where it's crossing? It's in between four and eight, right? That where that's meeting? Hmm? Okay, right here. It's on that line. That number is going to be between four and eight, correct? Okay, looking over here at your options, either A, B, C, D, would it be 2, 16? No. Would it be 4 to 7? No. It would be a point, which is D. This point right here is 0, 7. 0, 7. Okay, so I want you to write for the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis. Now range is going to be our lowest number to our highest number. Looking at our y value. So looking at our graph, what is our lowest y value? Range is our lowest y value to our highest y value. Well, look at where I've got those bars. Does it go all the way down to zero? Okay, where does it go to? Two-ish? Okay, and how high does it go? Okay, so from two to 16 is our range. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you always want to draw those little bars to kind of show you where it range is at. Interval decrease. So looking at our graph, if we started over here, let's imagine we're on a roller coaster. We started over here. Is this increasing or decreasing? Mm -hmm. Start over here. 
is it increasing? Well, this is decreasing. Then it's, is it increasing or decreasing? Okay, so looking at this, we're looking for only when it's decreasing. So we're gonna highlight only when it's decreasing. So decrease and then decrease, right? Okay, now where does that happen? Let's look at our X values. So our X values are what? From zero, so when does that stop? Yeah. Okay, so 1.5. And then when does it start? Four, and then how long does it go till? We're just looking at the X values. Okay, so from four to seven, it's decreasing. So seven, we should put parentheses. So that's A. So from four to seven, it's decreasing. And then for increasing, we went from one and a half to four. So that's C. We're gonna look at the parent functions. All right, characteristics of the function. So I want you to tell me, what's the range for this one? What's the lowest y value to the highest y value? What do those arrows represent? No, what do these arrows represent? Okay, so where are they going? It keeps going on like forever, right? Okay, so the range for this one is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. This is also known as all real numbers. Okay. So then I can take any value. I'm going to have any value that works between negative infinity to positive infinity. So for instance, I'm going to have somewhere like, let's say, 2 comma 2. That's going to be a point. So I have a y value at 2. I'm going to have a y value at 2.2. I'm going to have a y value at 3. I'm going to have a y value at 3.1. So it just keeps going continuously on forever. So any number in between negative infinity to positive infinity. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Domain is also going to be the same. I can plug in any number and get an output. There's no holes in this graph. Now, is this increasing or decreasing? Start from the left. Okay. And is it increasing the entire time? Yeah. Okay. So that's from negative infinity to positive infinity. It's not decreasing. positive values and negative values. So positive means that we're above the x-axis. Negative means we're below the x-axis. So positive, it's gonna be above. So we're from zero to positive infinity is when we're above the x-axis. So from zero to positive infinity. For negative values, we're gonna be, so negative infinity to zero, we always wanna go left to right. Range um, all okay, and that's from bottom to top, right? Okay, how do we find increase and decrease? Okay, and then positive and negative values. How do we find those? Okay. Cool. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, so tell me range. What's the lowest y value to the highest y value? Between. Okay. So for range? Let's go for the domain. Domain, how far over does it go? We're doing left to right, right? So how far to the left does it go? 
for those errors. Oh, maybe. Mm -hmm. So neutral to positive infinity to positive infinity? Negative infinity to positive infinity, yes. Because your x is negative. Mm -hmm. Okay, now range, what's our lowest y value? The lowest y value. Mm -hmm. With our highest square value. Okay, so we go from zero to infinity. Okay, what about left? Ready from the left and right. Is it going down first or is it going up first? It's going down. Okay. So it's going down, and we're saying from negative infinity to zero. And for increase, we're going from zero to positive infinity. Okay, so no negative, but we have negative infinity to positive infinity because it's above the x-axis, right? Okay, so what went wrong? Kino is examining the quadratic function shown below. She knows the following characteristics has one mistake. Can you find her here? So, look at her. Okay, so let's talk through it. I know that the domain best, best way is I don't know what the best way is. I don't know what the best way is. Okay, so the second one says interval of increase. So, is it decreasing or increasing first? It's decreasing. Okay, then it's increasing, right? When is it increasing? Zero. Okay, so zero to positive infinity, right? Well, we're saying x is bigger than zero. So zero to positive infinity, is x bigger than zero? When we're talking about those numbers? Okay, there's a question mark after that. So three is in between zero and infinity, right? Is three bigger than zero? Yeah. Okay, so that's what this is saying. X is bigger than zero, which is true. Now, the interval of negative values, right? Is there anything below the x axis? Mm -hmm. So, this is our lie. All right, so we've got some kid renting an e scooter to go around. <clears throat> and they use an app to accept payments for the renting. In the app, it states that the function C of T gives the cost renting e scooter in dollars for T minutes. Based on the app, who knows? C of 2 equals 1.5. C of 5 equals 2.25. So what does each equation tell us about renting the e-scooter? So back up here, it says C of T gives the cost of renting the scooter for T minutes. Okay. So when we say C of 2 equals 1.5, we're really saying for 2 minutes, it costs how much? Okay. Okay, can you write out what B is? Okay, so for five minutes, it's $2.25. Okay. Cool. All right, use function notation to represent each statement. So we're going to actually work this backwards. So it costs a dollar to unlock the scooter. So for zero minutes, so for zero minutes, it costs a dollar. So I put C of zero equals one. Okay, you try B. Try to write in function notation. Right. So C of 10 equals 350. Okay. So now we're going to graph the points from function notation above. So we had C of zero equals one. That is zero comma one. You told me C of 10 equals 350. So I'm gonna go 10 equals 350. Okay. What about the ones up here? Okay. 
What about the ones that are up here? C of 2 equals 1.5 and C of 5 equals 2.25. Okay, so read those again. C of C of two is equal to one point five. And what was the other? C of five is equal to two point five. Okay, so you're gonna put two comma one point five. Two comma one point five. And then graph that last one. Over five and up two point two five. Okay. Now you can connect these dots. You know, this little old line is a little janky, but this is a linear equation, right? Okay, so on part two, it says using what you know about the scenario, what is the function of C of T, the app using to charge e-scooter renters? So just a reminder, when we run a write an equation, we have this. Okay, so what was the initial cost? Like if we just were gonna like unlock the scooter. Okay, so one is our y-intercept. Okay, now we gotta figure out what our slope is, how much we're going up by each time. Okay, and they say that from Uh, let's go this way. C of 2 equals 1.5. Okay, so they say that C of 2 equals 1.5 and C of 0 equals 1, right? I'm trying to find slope. So remember our formula for slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what we're going to do here is we're going to label this as x1 x2, y1, y2, and we're going to plug all that junk in. So we're going to get 1.5 minus 1 over 2 minus 0. When we plug that into our calculator, we're going to get 0.5 divided by 2, which is going to give us 0.25. So the slope is 0.25. So we're going to say C of T equals 0.25 times T, not X, plus 1. So we're going to talk about slope intercept form, which is exactly what we just did, right? Right, exactly. So a second scooter company uses this function. It's a different function where X represents the number of minutes. So identify the Y intercept and tell me what it means. And then identify the slope and tell me what it means. Okay. So what's the y-intercept in this situation? No, nope, that point 50 is being multiplied by that x. That's how we know that that's the slope, right? OK, so that's 0. 0.5. What does this 2 represent? B. OK, so the slope. I'm sorry, the y-intercept. So 2 is a y-intercept. But what does it mean in context? What did it mean in our last problem? This was our equation, right? What was that one? We got C of zero equals one. What do we get that from? C of zero equals one. Where did that come from? Um, how much money cost on our Right. So it costs two dollars to unlock. Now, what does that point five represent? How much time? How much time? So, the right. so cost per minute 
because what we're doing is we're taking 50 cents and we're multiplying it times every minute, right? All right, now, last one says find G of 10 and explain what it means in this situation. So what am I going to do with 10? What am I going to do with 10? So we're going to take 10 and we're going to plug it in for X, right? Okay, so we're going to say 0.5 times 10 plus 2. And we're going to type that into our calculator. So 0.5 times 10 plus 2. <clears throat> so you're going to type that into your calculator. And when you do that, you're going to get 7. So that means for 10 minutes, it's going to cost $7. Okay.